Autodesk Quantity Takeoff provides powerful tools for creating a detailed quantity takeoff by extracting quantities directly from your building model. The process starts with opening your building model and exporting it as a DWF file that will transfer into Autodesk Quantity Takeoff. For our example, we'll be working with a small three-story building with retail space on the first floor and office space on the two floors above. There's also a central lobby with open balconies at each floor and skylights at the top of the atrium. Let's switch back to a 3D view that shows all of the elements in the building model because when we do the export, only the visible elements will be transferred. We'll open the Revit menu and choose the Export option. Then within that menu, choose DWF as the export format. When the export dialog opens, you'll see the 3D view of the model that we had open. We want to export not only this view, but actually all the different views of the model. And to do that, what we can do is choose In Session Viewer Sheet, and then from the Show and List submenu, say All Sheets and Views in the Model. This is a list of all the different sheets and views that are contained in your building model, and we'll check all to make sure they're all included. We'll say Next. Give our DWF export file a convenient name like export to QTO, say OK, and all of the views and the 3D model are exported to a DWF file. Let's switch to Autodesk Quantity Takeoff where we'll create a new project. Let's give our project a new name, for example calling it Lesson 3. We'll say Next. We can choose the system of units. We'll stay with Imperial and US dollars. We'll also choose a catalog. A catalog is really a structure for organizing all our different building elements into a common format, and we'll use Uniformat as opposed to one of the CSI formats that are available. Let's choose the Uniformat catalog and say Next. Then we'll add our building model to this project. Choose Add, navigate to the folder where you stored the DWF. For me, it's in the Unit 7 data sets. Lesson 3. Let's choose the DWF file, say Import, and when we finish, the model will be imported and all the building elements will be extracted so that we can work with them to build a detailed quantity takeoff. When the models have been imported, you can close this window. Choose the elements you'd like to import. We'll leave them all selected for now. Say OK. And when the import is completed, your model appears in this 3D window. This is the default 3D view of the model. If we'd like to look at the other views, we can go to the Window menu and choose Documents to see a list of the other views which were also exported as part of the DWF. We can shift over to see the section view of the model, a view that isolates only the structural elements, as well as one that focuses on all the architectural elements. We can also look at the 2D views, for example, the floor plan at level 1 or level 2, or the reflected ceiling plans enabling us to work with whatever view of the model makes it easiest to take off the elements that we'll need to do a quantity takeoff. Let's return to the default 3D view of the model. Then open another tab, this one showing the model elements so we can explore the model by selecting individual items. For example, we can go through and choose the roof elements and highlight them in the model view. We can choose the window elements, the wall elements, or open these to go through and select specific types. For example, if we'd only like to get the skylights, or the casement triple windows, or the awning windows. Using this view, we can select individual elements, then right-click and take them off. When we use the takeoff command, the selected elements are copied into the model takeoff. Let's open the takeoff window and see those elements. 
When you open the takeoff window, you'll see a work breakdown structure following the uniformat codes already loaded into the window. This was loaded in because we chose that workbook to be imported when we were importing our models. You'll also see a new group located at the bottom of the list containing the elements that we've taken off from the model. You'll see that the roof elements, let me expand this description field so we can see a little more and expand the group. And you'll see that we have a steel truss insulated roof as well as a generic roof. Those are the two items that we've taken off from the model so they're currently in our takeoff. Now we can return to the model tab, highlight the roofs and hide them and continue taking off elements of the model by selecting them one at a time from this list and right clicking and saying take off the item. But there's actually a much quicker way if we'd like to take off all the different elements within our model. And that's to go to the take off menu and choose model. If we say that we want to take off the entire model, Autodesk Quantity Takeoff will look at all the model elements and import them all into our takeoff window. It takes several passes to go through and do the complete takeoff. And when it's done, you'll see that all those elements show up in the list. This dialog shows that the takeoff is complete from this 3D view, that 2,311 objects were taken off. And if we close this, we can return to the takeoff window and find new group containing all the different elements that came from the model. For example, the floor elements are here. The curtain panel elements are here. Next to each of the different descriptions is a count of the number of elements that came from that category. But we now have all of the different elements from the model taken off into a structure that we can now organize and start applying costs to. Let's return to the takeoff window and think about which of the over 2300 elements are going to be important to include in our quantity takeoff. There are a lot of elements in the model and depending upon the level of detail in our estimate, we care about some more than others. Each of the elements in the takeoff includes a field in the type column which indicates whether and how that element will be included in our detailed takeoff. You'll see that for the roof elements, it's currently marked as undefined. As undefined, that element won't be included. If we look down at the floors, however, you'll see that they're actually defined as having a type of area. That means that the key quantity associated with the floors that we'll be tabulating is the area of the floor. And those floors are included in another window called the workbook, where we keep a list of all the items that we're including as part of our estimate. Let's open that workbook view by going to the window menu and choosing workbook. It shows up as another tab. Let's open the tab. And you'll see that in the workbook from new group two, the list of elements that we imported from the model, you'll see doors and floors listed. If we expand the floors tab, you'll see individual items and there's the area of the floor element reported. And we can use this quantity, which was computed from the project model, to compute an estimate of the cost. Let's open the doors elements, take a look at how they're estimated. They're currently associated with an each, that is for each of the different doors we'll associate a cost with each of those specific items as opposed to doing it by linear feet or area. And what we need to do is return to the takeoff and for each of the different items that we'd like to include in the workbook, define the type that will be used for quantifying that element. The list includes count when we want to associate a cost with each individual item, linear when we're basing an estimate on the linear feet of something such as railings, area when it's based on square footage, or volume when it's based on cubic footage of a material, say concrete. Let's return to that takeoff tab and I'm going to pin it open so we can continue to work with it easily. Let me even shrink it down a little bit so it's not taking up all of the screen. Now for each of the different items in the takeoff, you'll find that there's going to be a type that's associated with it. If we'd like to go through and change the type so that, for example, on the roof items, we can estimate them based on the area of the roof assemblies, what we can do is go to, it's the grouping, not the individual item, but the grouping, left click 
on the type, and you can easily choose the way that you would like to quantify this item. For example, let's choose area for these roofs, also for the generic roofs. Again, let's choose area. Now roofs, walls, floors, many different types of elements make sense to quantify as areas. So for any of those different items, go through and choose that group and say that we want to do it by area, by area. The exterior walls we'll do by area, as well as the interior walls. After choosing the type, we can right click on a takeoff item to open its properties. And in the Takeoff Item Properties dialog, you'll see again the area is reported as the type. But we'll switch over to the Cost Data tab, and you'll see that we'll be basing our costs on the area based on the number of square feet. We can go through and put in a materials cost, let's say $25 a square foot, a labor cost, oh, maybe $35 a square foot. Or if you prefer, if you're going to be subcontracting this item out, you could put that item in and just put a combined cost of, say, $60 a square foot in the subcontractor cost. But once you've associated with the cost of the areas, we can close that up and take a look at another type of area. Let's open up the exterior walls. We'll look at their properties. Again, switch over to the cost data. And how about for that, we'll put in $45 for the material but again, say just, oh, $30 for the labor cost per square foot. This data that you've been putting for these different types of costs show up under the workbook. So if I go to the workbook and I take a look at the walls, you'll see that for the basic wall types, the quantities are reported. Costs still aren't showing up. So how do we make that happen? What we can do is actually right-click on the column headings and say that we'd like to see the labor cost, the materials cost, the subcontractor cost, and maybe the total cost. And what's happening now is for each of these different items, we're taking the quantity, we're multiplying it by the cost, and actually coming up with a dollar figure. Let's return to the takeoff window and look at a different type of item. For example, an item that's typically estimated as in each item are doors and windows, because we typically buy them, not by the square foot, but we buy them individually and install them individually. So for example, if we would like to choose the single glass door and make it a count item, that'll estimate it as each. We can choose the properties. Again, it'll be count. And if we go to the cost data, you'll see that for each door, we put in a materials cost. Oh, let's say that's $350 for each of the doors, and it'll cost $90 to install each of those. Let's also look at those curtain wall doors. We'll open the group, and within the group, we'll see the list of the different items. At the group level, we'll change it again to be count. And then we can right-click and choose the properties to again enter cost data for each of those curtain wall double glass doors. Let's say the materials cost on those will be say $850 and the labor cost will be oh maybe $250. Let's close up the doors. We'll take a look at another group. We'll scroll on up and we'll find the windows. Windows are often also estimated by counting them. So we can open up the window, the type, Choose that it's a count item. For the casement trim window, again, choose that it's a count item. Choose that it's a count item. And by doing these, we're actually adding them into the cost workbook. So they'll be showing up here under Windows, Casement Triple. Notice that these windows are still showing zero as the cost because we haven't entered a cost for them yet. Another way to enter the cost is just to put it right here. We can enter the cost right into the workbook grid. If we put in there that that window is $530, the cost will be updated quickly. If we put in there that that one is going to be $800, again, the cost will be computed. And this is another quick way of filling out the cost data. A third type of item that we'll want to look at are linear items. 
And a classic example of those are the railings. If we choose the railings category and look at the guardrails or the pipe rails, we can choose their type to be linear. That is, we'll be estimating them based on the linear feet of railing. Again, the handrails and pipe rails. Let's go for linear feet. We can choose the properties here and enter the cost data using the takeoff item properties tabs to put in a cost per linear foot. Let's say that's $110 per lineal foot with $50 a lineal foot for installing it. Or again, if you prefer, you can go to the workbook and enter it there instead. We can scroll to find the railings. There it is. You'll see that in the workbook right now, if we expand it further, the guardrails have a figure put in. The handrails don't have a figure put in there yet. So let's say that the handrails will be about the same cost to install per lineal foot, but a little bit cheaper on the materials cost per lineal foot. Notice that as we fill in our workbook, the total cost column is adding up the costs from the labor, materials, subcontractor, and equipment cost if we've included that too. So you're always getting a running total of the cost for each of the different takeoff items. When you're ready to share your estimate, you can create a report either within Autodesk Quantity Takeoff or export the data to spreadsheets or cost estimating software. To create a report within Quantity Takeoff, open the Report menu and choose Custom Report. In the Reports dialog, you have the option of giving your report a name. You can choose the information that you'd like to include on the report. High-level summary information, which is essentially just the bottom line. Groups, which will show not the individual items, but just the higher-level categories and the costs associated with each of those. Or actually drill down to the level of showing the individual items as well as the group headings. Let's choose to just show the group headings. We can also choose which set of takeoff items we want to include in the report, and we'll include the ones that we've imported from the 3D model placing them over on the selected side. We need to choose the columns that we'll have appearing in our report. Let's choose the description. Quantity 1, the labor cost, and the materials cost. When we say Create Report, the database is queried, and a report showing those items, including the total cost for each of those items, is created for us. We can print this report, or save it as a PDF document, or export it if we prefer, to a Crystal Reports format, Microsoft Excel, or even Microsoft Word. We can create many different types of reports, highlighting specific elements of the quantity takeoff that we'd like to share. Recent reports show up in this menu, so we can run them again easily, or create a new report. And existing reports show up in the Documents tab at the bottom of the list. So if we'd like to return to a report that's already been run, we can double-click and it'll appear again. Another valid approach for converting the quantities that we've taken off to a cost estimate is to export the quantity data to spreadsheets or cost estimating software where you can associate costs and do the computations using those tools. And to do that, what we would do is export the data. We can export a report to export one of the existing report formats or export the actual list of quantities choosing what we want to export, and finally, choosing the format that we'll be using to exchange the data, and then import the quantity data into the other tool and add the cost information there to summarize it into a cost estimate.